Hello everyone, it's week four of Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and more. February prompt, recycle, repurpose and reuse. And for anybody who's new to my channel and doesn't know what on earth I'm talking about, I've got a Facebook group called Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and more. And I post monthly prompts in the, in the group um, and then do weekly videos showing you different ideas as, as to how you can interpret the prompt. So February's prompt is recycle, repurpose purpose and reuse and this week I'm going to be recycling some of my paper scraps and some of my hoard of cereal boxes as well I've got oh I don't know at least 20 cereal boxes in in my stash um, and I really need to use them up these are useful for all kinds of things because you know they're nice heavy weight cardstock or reasonably heavy weight great for tags great for ATCs and, and that kind of thing and great for journal covers too now I have um taken apart a cereal box and I've just opened it up and then I have just trimmed along the side here trimmed along the side here just so that I can get it to fit evenly and have nice edges in my paper trimmer and then it's these flat panels here that I'm interested in so I've just trimmed until I've got the, the panel and then I've cut my panel here um, in fact I'm using a mixture of centimeters and inches and I'll explain why in a minute it is seven inches deep and 24 centimeters um, across. Um, it really, really doesn't matter what size you do these. You can do bigger ones if you want to, you can do smaller ones. But the reason I'm doing um, 24 centimeters across is that I want to use my um, my scoreboard. Let me just check that I'm in frame. And I want it so that I can score a spine in the middle. Let me just, I've got another one here. Let me just show you. I wanted to score a spine just so that I can insert a signature into into this um, and a centimeter is about the right size width for the piece of cardstock that I'm using that, so that's why I've used um, centimeters just easier for me to use than than inches today so the middle is 12 centimeters and I'm just going to go half a centimeter either side and I'm just going to score it so down there and down there. There we go. And that gives me my spine. Now I know that not everybody has a scoreboard. It's fine. You can do exactly um, the same thing with a with a ruler. You just need something to score it with. Um, you know, a blunt a butter knife would be ideal. Um, if you've got a bone folder, anything like that, um, one of these styluses is, is is perfect. And all you do is mark the middle, and then you know however wide either side of the middle you want to go to create your spine so you know a centimeter was fine by me so I'd mark the middle and then go half draw a line half a centimeter either side and then score so as I say you don't need um, an, a, a, a scoreboard for this I want to create a signature in the middle of this um, spine here and so I'm going to make myself a template and I'm just using the edge of my cereal box so it's this part here that um, I've cut off and I've cut it to seven inches which is the same um, length as my um, journal and all I'm going to do I mean I haven't bothered tidying up the edges because you don't need to it's not important at all and I'm just going to do exactly the same thing I'm going to score um, so I've got my um, centimetre mark here, my middle here, and then I'm just going half a centimetre to either either side. So just so that that mimics um, my, my spine. There we go. In fact, let me do it, do it the other way so that you'll be able to see. And in fact, what I should have done, bear with me, let's stick that um, back on. What I'm going to do is lightly mark the middle as well. I don't know whether you can um, see see that there. Can you see that um, I haven't gone all the way through, I haven't pressed too hard, but that's just marking the middle of my spine. So let me just get rid of that. Um, all I want to do now is grab my ruler and a black pen. Here we go, that one will, will do. And I want to measure um, three and a half inches in, which will give me my, my centre point. So three and a half, there we go. And then I also want um, an inch at either, either end. So one and six. 
then I can use this as a template um, to punch some holes for my book and I'm going to do that before I start gluing anything down so let me just go and grab a phone book and a pokey tool and I'll be back my phone book here and I've just opened it up and I'm just going to make some holes where I made those marks and it just makes it easier when you use um, a phone book so I'm going to do my template first whoops a daisy so punch my um, holes just using um, my pokey tool there we go and then I can use this as a template um, for my journals so you know fold it over and make sure make sure that that template is tucked neatly in place like like that and then I'm just going to use a bulldog clip just to make sure that that's firmly in place and just so that it doesn't um, shift and then I'm just going to go through my cardboard and is it coming out the other side yes it is just poke that through to make a nice big hole Just using the um, phone book so that you've got somewhere to to poke and there we go we've got holes that are nice and central keep your template don't throw that away because you'll need that later for adding your signatures to your journal now I've received quite a few comments from people um, during this month's prompt saying oh I don't have any of the larger um, painted papers that, that you have all I have is just small scraps and school bits small bits and pieces well I've got loads of those too and so I thought it would be a good idea um, to use these to decorate our covers we're just going to do a collage so I think what I'm going to do looking through this box here I've got a lot in pinks and, and purples and you know these are from all kinds of projects Th this strip here is from when I was doing the backgrounds using um, the acrylic stamp blocks these are stamp up paper stamp off papers from when I was doing the salad spinner art I mean there's just there's just all sorts in here um, I've got um, pieces of napkin I've got drop paper um, marbled pieces of paper that there really is all sorts in here in fact actually there's lots and lots of marbled papers um, and I wonder whether I should stick with a pink and purple theme I think I, I will um, so I'm going to sort of have a sort through this and see what I can I can find to decorate um, and as soon as I've done that I shall be back my desk and I've just put down a piece of parchment paper just because we're going to be using a lot of glue and you're going to need to um, prep your surface um, to start off with as well I want um, the plain cardboard on the inside um, because I shall paint that at a later date so I'm going to work on this side here and I've just got some sandpaper and I am just going to sand the outside of my cereal box um, just to give it some grip so that the, I have no issue with the glue sticking. I'm just going to glue everything down with a glue stick and I've got a piece of deli paper here and I'm just going to start gluing, gluing everything down and I shall probably put this on to fast forward for you. Um, if it starts to get a bit boring, we'll see.
things so far and there's just a couple of areas that um, I'm not happy with and so I'm just going to add some pieces over the top. I think I want another strip of that um, alphabet piece. I just love that. What have I done with my um, glue stick? There we are. And I'm using this credit card which just helps um, to get rid of any air bubbles um, and just smooths everything, everything out. I think I'd quite like to add that piece there. Played around with the cover and I'm happy with it now. Um, and I don't know whether you can tell, I've covered up all of the hard lines where I hadn't bothered to tear the edges of the paper. It was just jarring with me, it just didn't work. Um, so as I say, I've just played and played and played until I'm happy with it. So that's all nicely trimmed. And now what I want to do is I've got this set of watercolour paints that I made, oh gosh, a couple of years ago. I've got a video showing how I made these somewhere. And they're made with mica powder and gum arabic. Um, and they're very, very similar to, you know, sort of like the cosmic shimmer watercolours and, and that kind of thing. And I want to use a trick that I am almost certain I saw Shannon Green do. If I can find the video, I'm pretty sure it was Shannon, um, then I will leave it um, in the link below. But she did torn strips. It might even have been Cat Hand. I'm really not sure. And used um, Twinkling H2Os, I think it was, just to go over um, the edges. Oh, am I in frame? Just, yes, just to go over the edges like this. And so I'm going to do a similar kind of thing. And um, I've watered down the uh, purple and the turquoise and, and the blue. And I've got this pale pink and, um, and a brighter pink as well. And so I'm just going to play. I could do some clean water. Let me just go what and get did some. was just got rid of um, any of the white edges and just added a bit of, of glimmer because, of course, you know, these are sparkly. So I'm just going to do the same same kind of thing. Just getting rid of those white edges here and just adding a bit more bit more colour. And again, you know, using these paints so that I'm in keeping with this recycling theme. You know, these are old paints that I made made myself. And I might add some gesso to this. I haven't decided what um, I want to do as a focal image on this page. Um, I'm just making it up as I go along. I think I'll change my colour. I think um, let's add some blue. Anything goes here. Wow, this one has got um, a lot of mica. I haven't used these in absolutely ages. Just look at the shimmer in that. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. I'd forgotten how much fun um, these are. I got um, the mica um, from a company called The Craft Shack and it's it's on eBay. I think they've got um, a website as well called The Craft Shack and it's really good quality mica. I just love the colours um, in this. It's just gorgeous. Now you'll see that um, you know my cardboard has really warped um, and I know that I received lots of comments saying oh my paper warps how do you get yours so flat. Don't worry about it at this stage, it really, really doesn't matter. What I want to do now is try and um, bring all, all of this together and just make it a bit more cohesive. So I've got some gesso on a palette to my left hand side and I'm just going to go over the top with a, with a palette knife. Um, I still want to be able to see all these gorgeous colours and I'm hoping that you know all that lovely watercolour will shine through. But this will just tone everything down a bit and just sort of, you know, make it more cohesive and gel together a bit more. And then we can start thinking about adding some kind of focal image because, of course, you know, we've got a real mishmash. Although we've got similar colours, we've just got a real mishmash of, of all sorts um, on, on this. And so we need to just try and bring it together a little bit love the effect of this with um, adding the gesso. It's toned everything down. I love all the colours um, showing through. I want to work on the inside now and I'm going to use um, some heavy bodied acrylic paint in silk purple if I can get the lid off. I don't use this very often hence why I'm using it up and I'm just going to apply it with a makeup sponge. Um, I'm hoping that um, I won't need to add any gesso. In fact what I shall do is work on this piece of deli paper here so that I can just move it out of the way when I'm when I'm finished. Oh, everything's stuck to it. Let's go for it. Okay, 
Okay, so the purple has covered up um, the background and I want to introduce some blue. This is a Winsor & Newton professional acrylic and it was £2 from the scrap store um, and I guess the reason it was um, so cheap was because it started to go a little bit gelatinous and so all I've done is put a little bit on my palette here and I've added some water just to thin it down a bit and I'm using one of these faux natural sponges. They're made to look like natural sponges but, you know, they're not. Um, I picked them up for 39p from, you know, um, the cheap stores and I'm just going to go over this just with some of that blue and I want to add some gesso through a sponge as well at the end of it just to add some interest to that page and tie in all of the colours that I've got going on in the, in the, um, on the front. Okay, so here it is and it looks pretty ugly at the moment but by the time we've added some white gesso over the top it will pull, pull it all together and tone everything down so you know if you end up with an ugly duckling it doesn't take much before it becomes a swan so have faith in yourself and just keep going if something looks horrid add more to it. And you can see here, I've mixed um, some of the blue here with some of the white gesso um, and I'm adding another layer. Then I shall go over with another layer of the purple before finishing off with the white. And I just think that with sponging, it's these gorgeous layers that um, add all the lovely interest and it, it, you know, it ends up looking marbled. I just love this. Just go lightly. You don't need to add too much. Don't go mad. So that's how it looks with um, a layer of the purple over the top or the silk purple as it's called and now I'm just going to add my final layer of gesso over the top and I like that you can see that dark blue poking through in the background. So we'll just add a final layer of the gesso and it just gives it this lovely marbled texture and it really is just building up the layers that gives you um, this gorgeous effect. Does it take you back to the 80s when we all had um, marbled walls? <laughs> I hope you can see how gorgeous that looks. I just absolutely love that. Let me just hold it um, up close. It really is marbled. Just love it. Um, and that's the cover. So this is really starting to come together now. Now what I want to do um, is just add a layer of matte medium over the top of this. Just, you know, so that any of those collage papers don't end up coming, coming up. So I'm just going to go straight over the top. And then I've got um, an idea for a focal image. I love it. And you can see now that all the layers have been added. All that warping has settled down and you know it's relatively straight and by the time the signature is added there really isn't anything to worry about. Um, now before I add a focal image I'm going to do my usual business um, by adding a border um, just whilst it's flat um, and then of course by the time I've added my border then I can set this aside to dry and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to add stays on ink because it's permanent um, and I'm adding um, midnight blue to start off with and I shall add a really really nice thick layer because this will just frame um, my page or my um, cover. So I shall go all the way um, around. So that's how the front looks and I'm going to do exactly the same thing now on the reverse side as well, on the, well, the inside. I mean, that's the outside, the cover. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the inside. And as I say, it just, just frames everything and creates a really nice border finishes everything off and covers up any untidy edges as well. Now before I do anything else I just want to re-poke my holes um, so let's just do that go gently um, so I'm just going to go through and watch your fingers as well so we're just going to go right the way through and we can do it from the other side as well there we are so that when we add our signature it's just so much easier. So that's all ready for me to add my um, signature later. I just love that. I just think that's gorgeous and what a difference um, you know the frame makes by adding some ink around the edges. So let's have a look. Um, let's do a focal image. Make sure that um, your cover's the right way up. Mine was upside down. Um, so that's the right way up um, and it, I know it's the right way up because of course I've got um, alphas in mine. I just love that. It's so gorgeous and I want to add a flat 
flower and I'm going to use this leaf, homemade leaf made out of um, kids fan foam to make my petals. Um, I've just cut a leaf shape out of kids fun, fun foam and I've just um, put two pieces of foam together, glued it together and so that's what I am going to use. And I've got some gesso um, off to my left hand side and I'm going to start off by adding um, the centre of my flower and I'm just going to use my finger. There we go, just like just like that. Um, I need a baby wipe. Hang on, what, what have I done with everything? Here we go, this one here will do. Um, and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing then with my my leaf shape. Let me just put that there so that you can hopefully hopefully see it. Am I still in frame? So I'm just going to keep dabbing my leaf into the gesso until it's covered and we'll add one there and I'm just going to work right to left and you might think well you can't really see this um, this is just a base because I'm going to cover it um, once I've stamped my um, my flower so as I say I'm working right to left top to bottom a daisy just wipe wipe that off and because I've um, added gel medium um, if I make a mistake I can just wipe it off it really really doesn't matter so let's do that one again there we go I'm just going to keep working my way around so you don't need any fancy um, stencils or stamps here just a piece of kids fun foam that's all all you need which is about 50p a sheet And just look at all that gorgeous dendritic pattern that I've got going on there. And now I'm just going to give that a dry and I'm going to go over um, the flower shape again. See that my flower has had a couple of coats of paint. I just love the dendritic pattern in that. And I'm just going to leave that be. And I've got a smaller leaf made in exactly the same way. And I'm going to do the same thing to the left hand side or the reverse side, of course, once you know the journal is closed. That one will be on the front and I want to ha have one on the back as well I'm going to do that one lower down um, so let's have a look and this center is just a guide for me um, to add the petals because you know you can see that um, you, you can't really see it and whether I add a little circle to it I don't know let's, um, let's see there we go center to the to the flower um, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this one now this one I have mounted onto a piece of um, store card but you don't have to it really really doesn't matter and it doesn't matter where you start you're just going to work left to right right to left top to bottom right my flowers are dry um, my gessoed flowers so bring back my metallic um, watercolors and I just want to add some color and in fact what I think I might do um, is just add a little bit of water to that gesso first I've got some purple on my paintbrush now but that's fine um, and by doing this you'll be able to see all that lovely dendritic um, texture from where I pulled up the stamp in fact I don't know why I dipped that in I've got I'm using a water brush for goodness sakes Nina <laughs> can you believe I did that oh dear never mind so I'm going to go all the way around I'm twisting my um, my book just because it's easier for me to do that and then I think I'm going to add this gorgeous pink um, to start off with I could do some more water in there it's starting to dry out a little bit now and just let that spread oh just look how gorgeous that color is isn't that beautiful And because these are, are translucent, you can see, as I say, all that gorgeous um, dendritic pattern that I created as I was lifting the stamp up. 
so interesting isn't that lovely and maybe to give it some dimension I could add um, maybe some of the blue how about that I just love this blue turquoise oh yes let's just go for some of some of that in there too so I've just kept adding lots of layers of the watercolor until I'm happy with the um, color and the look that I've got now I've got a uniball vision elite and it's blue and I just want to add some scribbly lines just to define my petals it's just a, a rollable pen from the supermarket I think nothing special at all that's had a quick dry so we'll just do exactly the same thing with a white Posca paint pen so again it's just add, adding those loose scribbly lines and adding more more layers loose layers don't have to be neat about this in any way whatsoever in fact the looser and scribblier the better really and then I'm going to add um, a stem and I'm going to use my blue again so Do the same here and then I do want to add um, some leaves but I haven't quite decided how I want to do that yet so I'm going to let this dry first isn't that pretty the shimmer and shine on those flowers they're just absolutely gorgeous um, I just want to add some leaves and I'm going to do that in the same way as I did the flowers but I've got two different sizes of these homemade stamps so I'm going to add the larger one um, to the larger flower and the smaller one to the smaller flower and then I shall decorate them with the watercolour paint in the same Have way finished I'm pretty happy with how that looks I might add a title I don't know or maybe even you know a small stamp I really don't know at this stage but I'm happy with that so far and that's how it looks on the inside um, so I just need to work on what I want to do for um, the what you call it the signature so I've made a signature of painty papers to go inside my journal let me just bring back um, the little cover so it'll fit inside nicely just just like that um, just the right thickness and let me just show you what it what um, what I've put in here. This is one of the um, mop-up papers from when I was doing the salad spinner art. It was just the paint that was left in the bottom. So we've got that. I have no idea what that is. It just looks like leftover paint scraped on um, with either a credit card or a palette knife. A piece of mixed media paper here. Um, some lovely paint paper there. Um, not all of these are mine, I don't think either. Some have been sent in in Happy Mail, but I've picked out pinks and purples that match the cover. So you know, these are the things that um, that I've I've put in. Just love these, so much fun. And so what I want to do now, that's a piece of um, the Bombay inks on um, reverse side of photo paper. And all of these are at least big enough for 80 Cs, um, if not more. So somebody can either use this as a journal and paint on the papers or tear them out and use them for 80 Cs, tags and that kind of um, thing all lined up where I want them and I've got the original guide that I had and where I had that score line down the centre I folded that in half because what I am going to do now is put my little signature in the crease of my telephone book and then of course the um, the guide is going to be a little bit bigger so I'm just going to eyeball it and make sure that uh, I've got a similar amount um, at either end hanging over so plonk that in the crease and then what have I done with my pokey tool? Oh, bear with me, I have that by me in. Oh, there we, there we go. And I'm just going to poke through. So we'll poke that there, that and the other end. And I just want to make sure that that goes all the way, all the way through. And then we're going to start um, sewing. 
So this will of course match the holes that I poked in the cover. There we are. So move that out of the way because I don't need I don't need that anymore. And then I've threaded a needle with some of the purple hemp that I used the other day. So it's this waxed hemp here and I've used two and a half um, times the length of my journal. So let's move that out of the way and I am going to come in from the centre. In fact what I'll do is I'll go through my signature first, then go through the middle of my, my journal. And because I've poked the holes all the way through, it should be much, much easier, she says, to pull the needle through this time. There we go. So I'm coming in, in the centre, from the inside first, and I want to leave a nice long tail. Then I am going to turn it over, and I want to come in from the end. Either end, it really, really, really doesn't matter. And we'll go through through the signatures. Now this is the, the tricky, tricky bit. Here we are. We're nearly there. And through. Where's the end of that one there? Oh, come on. There we are. These will all come together in a minute. It's looking a bit wayward, but it will come together. Pull that through. Where's my trusty pliers again? Sorry, I'm knocking the um, camera again. There we are. So holding on to that tie in the middle and pulling that all the way, all the way through. Then as we did before, I'm going to go through the other end and through the other hole in the cover. Pull that through, there we are. And then we want to go back through the centre again. So I'm just going to pull these nice and tight to start off with. I could see that that was a bit flimsy on the end. It still is. So let's just make sure that we've got that all nice and nice and tight. There we are. And then we're going to go back through the centre. And we're going to end up on the other side of that piece of waxed thread. So that we've got a string either, either side. Pull our needle through. There we go. Let go of my, my needle now. And then we just want to make sure that that's nice and tight. So I'm pulling one to the left and one to the right to make sure that I don't tear um, my pieces of paper and just making that sure that that's nice and firm on the other side, which, um, which it is. And then tie it in a knot. And it's as simple as, as that. So we'll tie one knot and then we'll tie another just to make sure that it's um it's nice and nice and whoops daisy, nice and firm. And then we can trim off those ends. And we have a finished journal. I just absolutely love that. Isn't that gorgeous? Let me show you my finished journal. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Um, you can see I've added a closure. Um, the pages just wouldn't lay flat and so I've just added a really simple closure. Let me just show you. I just put um, an eyelet through the back, just a white eyelet, um, and then I just looped through another piece of the cotton um, hemp so that I can just wrap it um, around the outside of the, the journal and just you know, really easily just loop loop that through to keep it um, closed so that it's all nice and neat. So let me show you the signature inside. Let me just show you all the pretty um, papers that are inside it. If I can get it open again, that is. Oh, come on. Right, there we go. Let's just unwrap it and then show you what's inside. So th there's the front and there's the back. I haven't done anything more to that. I've added no stamping um, as yet. I might do. I just want to have a, a, a think about it. But let me just show you the painted papers inside. Um, as I said, they're all pink and purple to, uh, to coordinate with the outside. Um, some of them are decorated on the back. Some of them are plain. But I just think this is really, really cute. And, you know, I could use this um, as a journal, um, a small journal, just to, you know, 
add to or the pages could be torn out and used for for ATCs um, I really don't know how I'm going to use this that is a jelly print I think but I just think these are really cute. I love this one as well because I just love the sound of it. It's just um, deli paper stamped off with turquoise paint on the end of one of these makeup sponges. And I've just dabbed off the leftover paint. I love that. As I say, it's that crinkly sound, isn't it? Bombay ink splashed with isopropyl, uh, isopropyl alcohol. I'm not even sure whether this one here, which has um, got loads of metallics, is even mine. Um, and then, of course, the backs going back the the other way so i just think that's really really cute um and i think that's given you some ideas now you saw that um i had cut up um some more cereal boxes as well because i do want to make a couple more of these let me just um close this again so all you do is just loop loop that through nice and um nice and simple and the other cardboard boxes that i cut up and what i was thinking i don't know whether any of you can remember me doing a show and tell of this it's the hungry caterpillar and i picked this up in one of our local um news agent types type stores village stores and it was 2.99 in the kids section and it's a paper chain garland and um, the very hungry caterpillar paper chain garland and i bought it to use um for collage because i just thought the patterns were just so adorably cute and so i'm going to have another go at decorating one of these with the hungry caterpillar um and then you know i've got loads loads more scraps so you know i just think these make absolutely great gifts for happy mail um, and that kind of thing um, swaps giveaways so i will do a show and tell when when i finish them but i hope you like that i hope that's given you some ideas how as to how you can use your very very small um bits and pieces and by using gesso over it it just sort of you know brings it all together so if you like that as always i would appreciate a thumbs up because you know it just lets youtube know that you like what i'm doing and let me know what you think in the comments below i look forward to seeing what everybody else decides to do for the last week of this recycle repurpose and reuse prompt um i shall be sad um that this one has come to an end but we'll be on to a new prompt for next week so take care everyone and i'll see you all again soon bye for now